So today we are starting um, DNA. It is a very, very difficult, it's like when we learned um, the sunshine down the spike the electrons, okay? So there's a lot that goes into it. I'm gonna streamline it the very best I can. The project that we're gonna be working on today and tomorrow used to be a color, cut, paste, and it was very repetitious. It took like three days to do. So I made a electronic version. I already made all the pieces for you, so all you have to do is cut and you know, copy and paste and stuff. So I'm trying to make it go as quick as possible and make it smooth as possible for you. Just know that I am trying. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's not ideal situation. And then we're like, hey, how about two snow days? And I was like, I'll take them. All right, some background information, okay? So Griffith, he basically tested mice with bacteria. And he used bacteria on this mouse here, and it didn't die. So then he tried a different bacteria on this mouse, and it killed the mouse. So he was like, okay, what if I heat kill this bacteria and give it to the mouse, and the mouse survived? Which is very, very similar to what they do with vaccines. They take the virus and they alter it, or they mimic it with a chemical, okay? So it's, it's almost the same, but it doesn't kill you. Okay? And it allows your body to go, I know who you are when you actually get around that virus. So he was like, what if I take this one that didn't kill the mice, mouse and this heat killed version that didn't kill the mouse and I combine them? And he did and it killed the mouse. So he's the first one that went, wow, there was some kind of permanent change by taking one non-lethal, one non-lethal and combining them. Okay, so he was the first one to kind of start thinking about this. Is everybody good? Okay. So to piggyback that, Avery came along and he started looking at why this happened. And he started thinking that it was the nucleic acids that were being changed. In other words, the parts of that DNA. You guys remember those macromolecules when I would say carbs are made up of? You guys remember all the way back from the beginning of the year, carbs are made up of? Very good. Lipids are made up of? Good. Proteins are made up of? Close. Amino acids. Amino acids. Very good. So DNA and RNA, do you guys remember what DNA and RNA are made up of? Nucleic acids are made up of? Yes. Oh my gosh. That is awesome. Bravo to you. Okay. So. Nucleic acids make up DNA. So he's going, huh, I think it's these nucleic acids. So nucleic acid is DNA or RNA made up of repeated nucleotides. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute. So Hershey Chase is again piggybacking on this. He's like, okay, so what's happening? So he starts looking at what is called a bacteriophage. This is a bacteria that basically has the flu. Not really, but. Um, it's been infected with a virus. Now, there's two types of viruses. We'll get to this. One type is the one we want to get, like the flu, where it actually enters the cell, it reproduces, kills the cell, but the body eventually fights it off. Okay? Now, the one that we don't want, you know, AIDS and herpes, it actually lands on the cell, injects its DNA. That DNA becomes part of your DNA. Every single time a cell reproduces, that viral DNA is in there. Every single time you can't get rid of AIDS, you cannot get rid of herpes, you have them for life. Okay? So he is looking at that type where the DNA has actually in, been injected into the bacteria. So it's a bacteria with DNA from the virus. That's a bacteriophage. Okay? And so he was like, holy cow. It completely changed the DNA. It's no longer like ATPC, GGTC, okay? It, it has a whole other combination that belonged to the virus, okay? So that was a huge thing. All right, so let's talk about what DNA actually is. So DNA is a nucleic acid, just like RNA is, okay? It's a nucleic acid made up of repeated nucleotides. Now, this right here is a nucleotide. This entire thing, it's made up of three parts, okay? It has a phosphate group. 
It has a five carbon sugar. In the case of DNA, DNA is actually deoxyribonucleic acid. That's where the DNA come from, okay? RNA is ribonucleic acid. That's why it's RNA. So the five carbon sugar in DNA is called deoxyribose. And it also has a nitrogen base. So those three pieces make up one nucleotide. And this is a nucleotide, this is a nucleotide, this is a nucleotide, this is a nucleotide, 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 okay, get it? All right. Now, the nitrogen bases, there's two types. There's purines and pyrimidines. It's pretty easy to remember which one's which, although it took me a really long time to see this. I don't know why. Probably wasn't paying attention in class. Pyrimidine has a Y in it. And the two types of pyrimidines also have Ys, cytosine and thymine. Purines, adenine and guanine, don't have those Ys. So that's the best way to remember. I can remember on a test being like, I don't know which one's which. Well, if it has a Y in it, then it's a pyrimidine. If it doesn't, it's a uh, purine. Now, to make things even more difficult, okay, it's not like the purines all go together and the pyrimidines go together. It's actually the opposite. A purine bonds with a pyrimidine. So, A's, straight letters, always go with T's, straight letters. C's, always go with G's. So if you have cytosine, you're gonna have guanine as its partner. So if this is cytosine, this is guanine. If this is thymine, this is adenine. If this is cytosine, this is guanine. Okay, C's always go with G's, A's always go with T's. Okay, watch it and creep along with two others. I don't know why the book doesn't even acknowledge the other two. Um, but Watson and Crick are the big ones that are always associated with the double helix, although there were two other gentlemen, or a gentleman and a woman, actually, um, who all were given Nobel Prizes for this. So let's go ahead and open up entry exit ticket 12.1. We're going to watch the video. We're going to answer the questions, and then we're going to talk about our projects.
Each of these scientists played a role in piecing together the structure of DNA. They learned that along the sides of the molecule was a backbone made of alternating sugar and phosphate molecules. On the inside, like the rungs of a ladder, are the nitrogen bases. Adenine and thymine form hydrogen bonds together. Cytosine and guanine form hydrogen bonds together. To help me remember which bases link together, I think of writing the letters. A and T both use straight lines. C and G use curved lines. I also know that A and T have two hydrogen bonds, but C and G have three hydrogen bonds by saying AT2, CG3. Silly things like this are actually a great memory tool. Strands of DNA are said to be complementary to one another because A will always be with T and C will always be with G based on the number of hydrogen bonds that they want to make. You can predict the complementary strand if you know the other strand. So let's use all of that knowledge about DNA and see if we can identify the parts of this blank DNA molecule. The easiest to label are deoxyribose sugars and phosphates. They make up the outside of the molecule. Deoxyribose is a pentagon shape, and the phosphate is just a small molecule in between. Next, we need to remember a rhyme, AT2CG3. So the nucleotides with two hydrogen bonds must be A and T, and the ones with three are C and G. To tell which one is which, you need to know that pyrimidines have one ring and purines have two. So cytosine and thymine are the pyrimidines, so they are the one ring bases. Adenine and guanine are the two ring bases. And now you have a labeled DNA molecule. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter. So guys, if you need to watch that video again, it's built right into the entry exit ticket. Correct? It's in the lesson. I know for sure it's in the lesson because I just showed it. Okay? So everybody, make sure that you get entry exit ticket 12.1 completed at least one time. And then go ahead and go to the DNA model project and make a copy of that so we can get started on it as soon as we're done. It's in the Wednesday folder. Guys, if you want to take it a second time, you absolutely can. I can see some of you have already submitted it and didn't get it perfect, and you can take a minute to do it again if you'd like. So guys, remember, if we were going to make a strand, and this is one side, the complementary guys, everybody look up, this will help you. A's go with what? T. T's go with? T. T's go with? A. C's go with? G. G's go with? C. C goes with? T. T goes with? A. Good. So this is the complementary side. Okay, so that'll kind of help you as you're moving your way through that entry exit ticket.
Okay, guys, so we're going to go ahead and go to this DNA molecule template. You're going to do your three dots. You're going to do your share and export. Make a copy. <clears throat> so, guys, if you need to retake this entry exit ticket, you absolutely can do this on your own time. But for right now, I want to make sure that you guys know what you're doing for the project. So, guys, everything on this first page here is straight from your notes. I think it's the third slide where it actually introduces to you DNA and what DNA is made up of, those nucleotides, okay? So you're going to fill in these blanks. You can actually make the line completely go away. Just click on it and then type over top. Because if you type, it's going to bump the line and it's going to make it look sloppy. But I went back and forth. I'm like, I've got to put a line there. They're not going to know they need to fill something in. Okay? Then you're going to look up a uh, nucleotide or a DNA molecule and label what each of these are. Again, shouldn't be tough. They're right there in the lesson. Okay? Then on the next slide, I made all the pieces and parts. Guys, this is to make your life so easy. All you have to do, click hold on it and say copy and bump to the next page and paste. Okay? So you're building a molecule of DNA, starting with the left side, okay? Or well, one of the sides, I'd probably do the left first. So you're going to make the bases A, G, T, C, T, A, all right? So what does each one have? Phosphate group, five carbon sugar, okay? You gotta connect them. So again, I went ahead and put all the lines, I put everything you needed. Here is a sample of what it should look like. Okay, so here's my phosphates. Here's my five carbon sugars called deoxyribose. That's why it has a D. And then you just go down and you put whichever one, A, C, T, and you make it match. When you're completely done making the left-hand side, you're going to screenshot it and paste it to the next page. And it explains exactly to do this right here. And then you're gonna build the right side. And I went ahead and just did one for you here. And this isn't obviously something that you can have. This is mine, <laughs> okay? And then you're gonna build your D's and your P's and you're gonna make it look the same on the other side, okay? So inevitably there's going to be questions. Inevitably there's gonna be kiddos who are like, I need help on this and that's okay. For today, life goal, get through this first page here here and get started on your DNA molecule, okay?